morning, family. What a blessed first day of spring. Amen? Amen. Tell you what, it's uh, not that I was like eagerly awaiting spring, uh -uh, not at all. <clears throat> but I couldn't have got here any sooner, let me tell you. Who all likes to do yard work? <laughs> hey, y'all are weird. I just got to tell you that right now. I love you, but you're weird. Um, who's got a really wet, soggy yard? Woohoo! Yeah, now I see there's more people that don't like doing yard work because their yards are wet and soggy. <laughs> I'm with you. You can use a chainsaw, though. Yeah, I did that yesterday. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to share with your family a message, a message of hope, some instruction. Father, I just pray that this message sheds a little bit of light and makes brings some freedom can pull some, some constraints out of the way so that your message will flow freely. Pull the dam out of the river to let your love flow. Father, thank you so much for allowing me to be your servant today. Be with those that are in harm's way. In Jesus' name we pray. The people said, Amen. Amen. So, you know, the last few months we've been talking about um, the essentials, right? We've been kind of pushing that a little bit. And you know, being the, the pastor who came up with the idea, I was like, I have to do something about the essentials. <laughs> and all week long I've been kind of struggling about the essentials. Okay, we did, two weeks ago I did repentance and baptism. The other guys have been talking about, you know, why we do what we do and I didn't, you know, it was kind of a like a writer's block, you know, until Friday night. I'm downstairs in my office, and I went, why? <laughs> hey, Lord, that's it. Why? Why, why, why? And we've been talking about that. I think Brody said it. I think we have all said it about, like, a four-year-old boy that's going, why? Why, why, why? And it came to me. It came right back. Why? So I had to ask, why do we want to know? Why we do what we do, right? And yes, I'm confused also. But hopefully I can clarify it a little bit. So let's let's just get started, shall we? Go ahead, Larry. So let's look at how the essentials are given. It's not so much what the essentials are, if it is, but with my discussion this morning, I want to discuss how are they given? How do we read them and how do we extract them from the scriptures? How do we pick up what God's laying down, amen? How do we do it? You know, you can sit and listen to, to sermons and different things, and you're going to hear some different flavors, um, the, the theologies, the doctrines, but it's right there in black and white and sometimes in red. How do we get that out? How do we pull that off the page? What is the essential? Because there's... A lot of things in, I'm going to say, Christendom that folks ain't, ain't just flat out ain't essential. It's not. It's something that a man or a group of people have decided this is essential. This is what you have to do. Well, when you read the scriptures yourself and you look deeper into it, you go, hey, what he said. And it's not something, it's not so complex unless you make it complex, as to really trip you up. And some people put layers upon the essentials that make it complex. It's really not. It's really not. So we're going to go through a couple scriptures today, and we're going to, I'm hopefully, as God opened it up for me, I could open, up, open it up for you, how simple it is to pull the essential off the page. If you'll turn with me to, to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Open your Bible or your app, whatever you have to be packing. <laughs> Everybody got their own little way of doing that. And we're just going to read it through real quick. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
Verse 10. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. <coughs> and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. So, let's break that down a little bit. Let's break that down to see what God, what essential God is trying to tell us here. And this is a scripture that's used quite often. I, you know, it's a good one. I will be all right. But let's break it down a little bit. What are the essentials in this? Okay? If you declare with your mouth, what does that say? Now, literally, read it. What's it saying? You have to declare with your mouth. Say it. Right? It doesn't say, if you happen to think this, right? You know me, I like to teach and preach very basically, plainly, if it's written in black, or black and white and red, period. What does it say? If you declare with your mouth, speak it, right? What's the next thing? If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, what's the essential there? Anybody, I don't care. Somebody, just tell me, what's the essential in Jesus is Lord? What's it prove? What's it saying? What's the essential? The deity of Christ. It's telling you. You don't have to wonder. Huh. Is Jesus Lord? It says it right there. Right? I'm going to show you how liberating that is in just a moment. Declare with your mouth. Speak it. Profess it. Jesus is Lord. The deity of, of, of Christ. And believe in your heart. Believe in your heart. Many, 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 and that's just a whole bunch, of people go through the motions. And you know what? It's not for me to know. It's not for anybody around this a person to know. But it is for God to know. And He does know. If you believe in your heart, only He can see the heart. So what's the essential? God knows the heart. And what's, what's leading up to that? And, declare with your mouth, and believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead. What's the essential in that? Only God can raise from the dead. God is the one that has the power over life and death. And he gave that to Jesus Christ by raising him out of the tomb. Amen? There's the essential there. Raising him from the dead, comma, you will be saved. Dude, if I, if I have to explain what the essential is in that, come see me afterwards. Well, after the potluck. No, well, I'll have mat time after that. Hold on. <laughs> Call me Monday. <laughs> You will be saved. So let's back it up. You profess openly. In fact, the scripture there, there is telling you to shout it from the mountaintops. Jesus is Lord. Confess with your mouth that the deity of Christ is on him, on Jesus. And believe. Believe in your heart, not your mind. Oh, folks. There are a lot of things that, I think it's that way. That's believing in your mind. But you believe in your heart. You believe in your heart. That God has the power over life and death. And if you believe these things, and are, see the, the first part is a verb. You have to do something. Right? Action. What? You will be saved, which is to me the most essentially central thing that, that you could ever ever put out of the Bible. And how are you saved? Mm. Believe. Believe. Verse 10. For it is with your heart that you believe, just supports verse 9. It's with your heart that you believe and are justified. <gasps> justified. To be made right. To be made, found guiltless. Justified. He who has the power over life and death. 
has justified you if you believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And once again, and it is with your mouth that you profess. He changed it here. It doesn't say if you, Jesus is Lord. It says if you, with your mouth that you profess, profess your faith. Not your beliefs. Your faith. And your faith is in, because you believe in your heart, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And he who raised him. Hmm. And, and again, you are saved. Saved. So in, the, in those two verses there, we just pulled all of these essentials off the page. What? So now you get to ask, why four? What? Why are you doing this? How come is it? Let's break it down even further. Have you ever wondered if I can, if you can, correctly, correctly proclaim the truth about Jesus Christ? Have you ever wondered if you have the ability to tell somebody who Jesus Christ actually is? Guess what? God just showed you how. Just by picking up the Bible. Just by reading two verses. You identify the deity of Christ, what you must do, and the result of it. Your salvation. In two small verses in Romans. Wow. You can probably proclaim the truth about who Jesus Christ is. We can properly proclaim now God's plan for salvation, what He requires. Two little verses. And here's the big one. It's kind of where the rubber meets the road, especially in a, in a family dynamic. Because I know I, I, I battle it, not within my own household, but the extended family. You know, brothers, aunts, uncles, cousins. <coughs> anybody I come in contact with. <laughs> now, because you've seen these essentials in just these two verses, and we're going to go through another one here in just a minute, you can recognize errors. When somebody says, in order to believe, you must do blah, blah, X, Y, Z, P, D, Q, blah, 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 and you go, nah, nah. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, sir. Pastor Greg told me, I need to believe in my heart the deity of Jesus Christ and the power of God that raised him from the grave and justified me as a believer in Jesus Christ. All the things you're saying, where'd that come from? And here's the other key to this. You're going to do it with love and compassion. Mm -hmm. Wars <laughs> for centuries have been fought over the essentials of Christianity. Sorry. <laughs> it just blows me away. Still. The crusades still kind of get to me. But anyway. I don't want to get off of that repertory. <laughs> but you can, you can recognize and hopefully correct with love. How did Paul, when he went to the synagogues, what did it say? He reasoned with them. He didn't argue with them. He didn't fight with them. He didn't call you a bunch of liars. Well, kind of after they really just... Anyway, <coughs> Jesus called them a brood of vipers. When somebody tells you, I, you need to do this to be saved, you can say no. It says right here in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, what God wants me to do, how He wants me to do it in order to be saved. And these errors that we're talking about, they jeopardize a person's salvation. 
The Bible talks about snatching somebody from the fire. By just listening to a person when they say, oh, in order to be saved, you need to do this. And in love and compassion, say, you know, I don't read it that way. This is, read, let's read this. Let's read Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. And this is what it says. And you can reason with them on that. Pray for the Spirit to open their heart and to hear the, the message in those passages. You know, you may be helping snatch them from the fire. Wouldn't that? You know, we're not to be proudful or boastful. But it doesn't say we can't have a really good God feeling over it. Right? Amen to that. Hmm. And one, one other thing you can do. It can open up a worship service. Huh? How? How about, let's just say you went to a church service. And I'm not saying ours is perfect, maybe. But let's just say you went to a church service. You were invited, you went, you sat down and you went. Huh. Their essentials are a little differently than Cascade Christians' essentials. Their doctrine is a little different. And if you ask a question, and they say, Oh, you mean you, you use Welch grape juice or Kroger's grape juice for communion? You can't do that. That's a sin. I'm, and I'm really making this up, but I'm not left, left field here. But it can get, sometimes it gets that weird. Honestly. Right? You guys do piano music? <laughs> Bring them on. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we do piano music. You guys have instruments? Yeah. Huh. Let me start getting into little ground where I don't read as essentials. Point is, what must you be, do to be saved? You read scripture about proper worship. You read scripture about how God wants a heart to worship Him. Folks, we put a lot of stuff in there that over time it becomes an essential within a church. Well, th but we have to do five songs and then we or two songs and we pray, and then three or four more, and we do communion. What do you mean you want to do something different? We can't even sit in different pews. <laughs> Why do they cut the ends off the ham? Right? That old saying? That's what mom did. That's what grandma did. You called great grandma in the nursing home. Why'd you cut the ends off the ham? I didn't have a pan big enough. No way to fit in there. It happens in church, folks. We start taking tradition and the way we've always done it, and we end up making it an essential. Read your scriptures. Listen to what he's saying on the page. Is it an essential? It's an essential. Let's go on to their next scripture before they y'all start getting up and walking upstairs because you're hungry. <laughs> you would never do that, right? <laughs> Turn with me to John 14.6. I can't remember, Bernie or Brad, one of you guys might have been in here. I'm going to maybe go a different direction. 14, verse 6. I figured, you know what? There's no way I could talk about the essentials if I didn't use a scripture that's written in red. Amen? Amen. It doesn't get any more essential than that. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. I, you know, I tried to break that one down to the essentials in that one. And I'm like, put parentheses on each end. <laughs> put parentheses on each end. The whole thing is an essential. So let's break it down a little bit. I am. Jesus Proclaiming with his mouth, who's our example? 
in life and how to do things? Jesus. He proclaimed with his mouth his own deity. Why wouldn't we, with our mouth, profess his deity? It's an essential. I am the way, the great I am. God says, He is the way. The way? What way? The way to life, the way to the truth. It says, I am the way and the truth and the life. You know, the world is looking for truth. And this one, more than, especially right now, the world is looking for truth. They are looking, so many people are finding their own truth. They're, they're making it up because it's comfortable, it fits them. Whatever. It's, it's not the truth. We read here as an essential, the only truth is Jesus Christ. Amen? John 1 tells us that Jesus is the Word. We're reading the Word as the essential. Jesus is the essential. The great I Am. Let's continue. The truth and the life. Which one? <laughs> all of them. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's all of them. Jesus Christ is a way of life, and He is the way to life. He's the way of life. Is Jesus Christ a way of life for you? Do you recognize Him and you proclaim Him as the way to life? Life everlasting? Life never ending? And here's Here's a big one. The essential. No one comes to the Father but through me. There is, and that speaking by Jesus Christ, about Jesus Christ, saying that He is the only one. He is the truth. So we, as an essential, know that the only way to the Father is through Jesus Christ. He is the door. He is the gate. You must profess, proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and believe in your heart by no other means on earth is there to go to the Father except through the Son. Amen? Boy. Look around. There are a lot of people out there that are professing louder than we are another way. Multiple ways. Multiple ways. Once again, to break it down, can we help snatch somebody from the fire by reasoning with them that Jesus, only Jesus, is the way, that only Jesus is the truth, that only Jesus is the life, and that life is with the Father. Mm -hmm. I am deity, the way, the truth, life. John 3.16, I just could not bring that one into it. For God so loved the world, for God so loved, what's the essential? God is love, love. His son, belief in him, not perish eternal life. Eternal life. Mm. Let's keep going here. Y'all are going to pull me out of here. I'll be standing here talking. Y'all be eating. <laughs> Where are you at with the essentials? I just have to ask real quick. No, not real quick. But it's kind of slow, kind of quick. How are you at with the essentials? Is the word essential to your every day, day in life. Hmm. Where are you at with the essentials? 
And I, I offer your brothers and sisters up, your family up. If you're struggling with the essentials, if you're wondering about the essentials, well, I need a little bit more. You know, just upstairs in a few minutes isn't our only feeding time. The women eat Monday nights. We feed Wednesday nights. We feed Sunday mornings before church. Are you feeding throughout your day? Are you looking for the essentials? You know, your prayer life. Folks, I didn't bring up, if you'd like me to, I can go into it, really get into the essentials and pull up some scriptures about the essentials of your prayer life. I didn't think y'all would appreciate me going through the entire Bible and me pulling out the essentials right now. <laughs> but you, <laughs> if you'd like to talk to me upstairs, we can do it. But how about the essentials of your prayer life? How about the essentials of your service? Great, there's essentials about service. Yeah, you know that whole thing about discipleship I talked about, we've been talking about, like, after you come up out of the water, you don't just go to class and then you, you're good for, you know, wait until God brings you home. No, He wants you to do something. He's asking you to serve Him by serving others. He's asking you to use the talents, the gifts that He's given you to do something. What's that? What did I finish with last week? Go unto the nations. That's, oh, what does it start with? Go. Sorry, his words, not mine. Go. To the nations, preaching and teaching. Baptizing them. And he promises to be with you. That's an essential. That is an essential. So where's your service? Where are you out with the essentials with your service? What are you doing with what God gave you? What are you doing with that gold nugget? That What are you doing with that treasure in heaven? Waiting to claim it? Or are you trying to share it? Share it. You know, there's many ways to read the New Testament. There's the storyline of it. This is what happened to Paul. It's really cool. Really tragic. But then there's a way to read it and pull the essentials off the page. To store them up in your heart. To be used. To put those essentials in your toolbox. To be used at a, at a later time. And God, through the Spirit, He, when you least expect it, will put somebody in front of you and He's expecting you to reach into that toolbox and bring that. Great. Three weeks ago in church, I gave you an essential. Here's somebody that needs to hear this. Yes, sir. Thank you. I, you know, if you want to read the, the Bible as a storyline, I do. <laughs> I love the stories of the Old Testament. You want to talk about intrigue, murder, <laughs> yeah. And Stephen King and all those guys, Spielberg, they can't put it on the big screen good enough to, to show the mighty power of God. They keep trying. But until we get there and we're standing before the throne, praising and worship, worshiping Him, we can't imagine. We just can't imagine. So, potluck. Notice I put question mark, potluck or fellowship. You realize we're about to embark on an essential. Who, who here doesn't believe eating is an essential? <laughs> it's not what I'm talking about. I just had to throw that in there. I mean, I can't build, you can't build a body like this without eating, right? <laughs> Are we going to, about to partake in a potluck or fellowship? Folks, that's a Bible essential. He talks about it in the New Testament. Getting together in the breaking of bread. And there are two ways to do that. We just did it a little bit ago. The breaking of bread, communing with Christ, partaking in the blood and the body of Christ. And then there's the breaking of bread and fellowship. It's important. 
according to the body? Are we feeding the body? Or are we feeding the body? <coughs> Folks, I consider potlucks, I'm just so thankful to God that we're able to get back up. I don't, yeah. I'm sure everything up there is going to be just absolutely mouth-watering. I can't eat it all, but I'm going to try good. But that's not the essential we're looking for. The essential we're looking for is the fellowship of the family. The fellowship of the family. I'm sure there are many of you that can all see each other on Sunday mornings, but since we haven't been able to get together like we wanted to, don't sit with somebody you know. Visit with each other. Get to know each other. You might find out that you have a strength to, to feed somebody's weakness. Or vice versa. Okay? It's essential. Come on up, music team. Amanda's already given me the sign. If I keep going, that's because Amanda gave me the... But she gave me this sign, so we can, we can stop. <laughs> We saw your eyes light up. Of course it's obvious. <laughs> oh dear. Folks, as, as we are singing, why do we put pencils up there? Because they use. It's not an essential. As we are singing, I would love for you to ask God in your worship, in your prayer, Father, where am I at with my essentials? With your essentials. I want to correct that. With your essentials. Show me somewhere, some way in me. And if you have not accepted Christ, if you have not gotten to that point in your life, I pray God unlocks that this morning. That the Spirit of God will come over you and you will stand up. You will raise your hand. Or you will come to me afterwards and go, I need Jesus Christ in my life. I need the essentials of Christ. And I want to do the acts of obedience. To be baptized, to repent, to be baptized. And to be discipled into a follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for this message. Thank you for your essentials. Thank you for Jesus, your Son. It's in Him that we believe. Father, I just pray that your Spirit right now is coming in our heart. Father, bless the men and women, once again, that are standing in harm's way. Bless the six that are in Poland right now, serving you. Bring them home safe. It's in Jesus' powerful and precious name, and the people said...